Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Let's understand statistics in SQL Server in this session. To understand SQL Server statistics, you had better have knowledge on indexing and SQL Server architecture. I have sessions on these topics. If you have time, I highly suggest watching them beforehand. Let's get started. So when a user runs a query for the first time to SQL Server, this query is submitted to Query Optimizer to generate query execution plan. Then, based on this query, Query Optimizer will generate candidate plans and estimate the cost of these plans. The estimated cost of a plan is based on algorithms operators use it, as well as the number of rows to be processed with each of these plans. We call this estimated number of rows as estimated cardinality. Then the execution plan with the lowest cost is chosen and query is run based on this plan. As you can see, cardinality estimation is an important process. If SQL Server cannot estimate cardinality correctly, wrong execution plan is chosen. As a result, your query is run with inefficient plan and you face latency. SQL Server uses statistics to estimate cardinality. In this session, we will deeply understand about these statistics. Let's first learn how to check what statistics are available for specific table in SQL Server. For this, we use this query by specifying target table. Statistics is created at column level and can be multi-column and single-column statistics. Statistics is created in three ways automatically by the query optimizer when auto create statistics is on and create index is run automatically by the query optimizer when auto create statistics is on and query uses where close statistics is created for that where close column for example if you run this select from sales order details where a line total more than nine statistics is auto automatically created for this line total column and finally, it, it can be created manually by running create a statistics statement. You can use these two columns to define how statistics were created. If all the created equal to zero and user create equal to zero, this means that statistics were created when index was created. If all the created set all the create equal to one and user created equal to zero, this means statistics was created for where close column. If auto created equal to zero and user created equal to one, this means statistics was created by the user. Let me show you an example for this. As you can see, I don't have any statistics for this table and auto update statistics is on. Let's create one index manually. As you can see, statistics have been created with the same name of the index. Let's check properties of the statistics. As you can see, statistics have been created for the same column of index. Now, what happens if we create index for two columns? Is multi-column statistics created? Let's see. As you can see now, our statistics is created based on two columns. Now, let's create statistics by our own. As you can see, statistics have been created manually for target column. Finally, let's run one where close query. We can see that statistics have been created for this state province ID column. Now we understood how statistics are created. Now let's explore the details of the statistics. You can use simple DBCC show statistics for this. First, we can see the name of the statistics. Let's first start from histogram below. Histogram is created for the first column only. It contains partitioning histogram steps. Here we have five steps. Range HI key is upper boundary of histogram step. The value 1 is an upper boundary for the first uh, showing, while 1064 is the upper boundary for the second step. This means that the second step contains values between 2 and 1063. 
Range rows is the number of rows contained within this range. As you can see, between 2 and 1063, there are 1062 rows. You can also check it manually by running this column. Okay? EQ underscore rows is an estimated number of rows whose column value equals to range HI key. For example, here there is only one row with address ID equal to 1064. Okay? So distinct range rows is an estimated number of rows with distinct column value inside this. As you can see, all the rows within this range is unique, distinct. You can check this by running this query also if, if you want to check. Average range rows is average number of rows per distinct value, excluding the upper boundary, and it is simply calculated as range rows divided by distinct range rows. Now let's see how this histogram is used. First, let's create one e index on state province ID and check status. You can see that if state province are uh, equal to 70, uh, 37, SQL Server estimates number of rows to process equal to 14. Let's check. Yeah, as you can see, SQL Server is doing the same thing. You might ask, okay, we are doing estimate. Why this estimate is necessary? The main reason is SQL Server chooses which index or operator to use based on this estimate. Let me show you. So this query has been received. There are 19,614 uh, rows in the table. Then SQL Server starts to create a plan. SQL Server checks state province ID and finds that there is index for this column. The next decision should be whether to use this index or not in the plan. To come to this decision, SQL Server uses statistics and finds that if state province ID equals to, equal to 37, the number of rows to be processed is only 14. Now, it compares the cost of getting 14 rows with index SIG or by scanning the whole table. SQL Server takes uh, the cal calculate CPU cost, IO cost here. If the operation with index is less costly, I mean, if getting 14 rows is less costly rather than scanning whole table, SQL Server uses index in the plan. But what if the estimated number is 14,000? In this case, the cost of getting 14,000 rows becomes bigger. Instead of doing additional index operations with 14,000 rows, SQL Server had better quickly scan the whole table. Let's see this with examples. Here, where when state province equal to 37, we can see SQL Server is choosing to use index SIG. Now, let's just try to find all provinces with less than one, uh, 178. In this case, we should add all the rows until 1, 000, uh, 178, right, to calculate estimated rows. You can see estimated rows here is 19,063. Therefore, instead of using index SIG, SQL Server is just scanning the whole table. Now, you witness it, how important it is to have correct estimate and statistics. If statistics is out of date and not correct, SQL Server might use incorrect indexing and operations with inefficient plan. Therefore, you should make sure that indexes are up to date and correct. By out of date, I mean your data is constantly changing and statistics is not representing the underlying data anymore. Statistics, of course, are updated automatically if you set auto update statistics on. Also, please be careful, if you run index rebuild operations, you statistics are also updated automatically. DBCC show statistics gives the data of creation and update index also. You should always check and keep statistics up to date. When it comes to determining the quality of your statistics, you must consider the size of the sample of the target table that will be used to calculate statistics. The query optimizer 
determines the a statistically significant sample by default, of course, but uh, you can also set it by yourself. You can use create statistics and update statistic, uh, statistics statements to just explicitly request a bigger sample size or scan the entire table to have better quality statistics. Bigger sample size is better, but there is a calculation cost, of course, right? Here we can see number of rows when statistics was last calculated and uh, out of these rows, how many rows were sampled. You can see SQL Server used all the rows in this case because the number of rows is very little here. This is all I wanted to talk about statistics by covering important points. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.